Hey, Chewie. Hey, Chewie, tell the audience what you think about back button focus. What do you think? Okay, welcome everybody back to another episode of Chatberry Photography. Thanks so much for joining me today. Just talking to Chewy here and she is uh, excited about today's episode. We're going to talk about something called back button focus today. Let's see you right back. All right, welcome back everybody. As you can see, Chewy is no longer here. She has no interest in this video whatsoever. She's not interested in my channel at all, actually, but that's okay. Anyway, we're gonna talk about back button focus today. So I wanna talk about what back, book, back button focus is, why you might wanna use it, why I encourage you to use it, and how to set it up. Now, I have my Canon camera here today. I'm gonna to set it up using the Canon menus. So I apologize to Nikon and Sony and everybody else. You can do this on your cameras, but the settings are gonna be, you know, you're gonna to have to find them in the menus a little bit differently. So um, first of all, why would we do back button focus? And to, to talk about that first, we need to talk about the focusing modes that are available right now. Okay, so we have two modes that we generally work in when we're talking about our autofocus modes, okay? So if we uh, tap on the AF button on the top, you're gonna see at the, when you roll your front dial here, you've got one shot, AI focus, and you've got AI servo. Now, there's really only two that you're, you generally use. The middle one is not used very often. Um, one shot is used for uh, when your subject is not moving. So your subject is gonna be stationary, maybe you're doing portraits, maybe you're doing some product photography, uh, landscape photography where you don't have a lot of movement in the scene and you're able to control that and refocus between each shot. It's often used to get your focus and then once it locks, you can recompose your shot. Now that's great if you have a little bit higher, or, uh, higher aperture where you're using like 5.6 or 6.3 or something, you've got a little bit of uh, room for movement, a margin of error there because you have a little bit more depth of field. But when you get start getting into like 1.8 and 1.4, you really need to be moving those focus points onto your subject right where it needs to be, onto the forward eye, for example, in portraiture, before you take that shot because getting that focus lock in the middle and then moving to side to side you're definitely gonna lose it. You're gonna find that the focus point's coming forward onto the nose or it's gonna hit the back eye or something like that. So you wanna have a lot of control, you're gonna be moving those focus points. But that's what one shot is for, is for working in those modes where your subject is not moving. For AI servo, or if you're in uh, Nikon or something like that, this would be AFC continuous. Servo is for when your subject might be moving it changing the distance between you and the subject. So you've got somebody, I use this for weddings, for example, the bride walking up the aisle towards me. I can focus in on that bride as she's walking towards me and I can focus the entire time and take the shots as she moves. And it, the focus follows her as she continues to move forward. Or the same thing of somebody walking away from me. I use it for birds, I use it for wildlife, it's very versatile. The problem comes in where you need to switch from a subject that's not moving to a subject that is moving. Now, in wildlife photography, this happens all the time. I've got, say, a fox that I'm shooting and uh, it's sitting there nice and still and I get a bunch of shots and I could be in one shot mode. Then all of a sudden the fox decides to get up, start booting it, and I've got to switch over to servo. And it just takes some time in the camera to be able to switch between those menus and you're gonna lose some shots in between. The middle menu option, AI Focus, is supposed to do that for you. It's supposed to identify if the subject is moving or not and make that change. And it's probably pretty good, but most of us don't wanna allow that camera to make the decision. We're gonna make the decision. We can anticipate when something is going to change and we can respond a little bit quicker. So we want a little bit more control. 
So the only way to really do this in between if you're not using back button focus is to go into that menu each time, switch from one over to the other, and then start refocusing. And the time it takes you to get in there, you could be losing five, six, seven shots. So there's another way, back button focus. And back button focus takes the, right now your shutter button, you press halfway down to both meter and focus, and then you press the rest of the way on the shutter to get your shot. What we're gonna do is remove the focus portion from the front, from the shutter button, and we're gonna move it to a button on the back of the camera. There's a couple things we do need to do to make sure this is done right. First, we're gonna move that in the AF mode into servo. I never have it in one shot, it's always in servo, because I'm gonna make decide when we're focusing using my thumb. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to go into your menu. So if you hit the menu button, and I'm already there, but let's say you start back here, uh, you're going to be on your, you see your red menu come up. We're going to go through, if you just hit the Q button, it lets you swap through those pretty quick. And we're going to go do the custom functions here. And if we go through to, uh, mine's on number three. Now, I think it was number three on my 5D3. This is my 7D Mark II. Same on my, uh, my 5D Mark IV. Um, I've used this on my Canon T4i. The, you've got this, the options in there. They may move it from time to time from one menu to another, but it's always gonna be pretty close to here. So we're in your orange menu, we're in the custom functions, and we're gonna go to custom controls. And we're just gonna hit set. And what we're gonna play with is these top two right here. Whoops, these top two, okay? The uh, shutter button and the AF on button. And if we just go to the shutter button, we're gonna hit set. Inside here, you probably have it set up right now saying probably this first one, metering and AF start. So in order for us to take that autofocus off that button, we're just gonna change it to metering start. Go ahead and hit set. Now, if you press halfway down, it's gonna start the metering in the camera. It's gonna to try to measure the exposure, but you're not going to start focusing. The next thing we need to do is change this AF on button. So hit set on that again. And we are gonna make sure that the first one here is selected. Metering and AF start, okay? If you hit okay on that, and then if you just press halfway on your shutter, you should be it. Now it's set up. So now it's how do we use this and why do we use this? Uh, we talked about being able to switch back and forth and that is really the biggest thing, but there are there's other uses as we go through as well. If you press half or press on your uh, AF button right now, you can start to see, and if you're looking at my camera, you can start to see the distance gauge here is moving because it is trying to focus using this button on the back. When I press on the halfway on the front, it meters only, I'm not focusing. So this is really great. My thumb is the focus, my finger is the shutter. So I get to decide when I am in each mode, just using my thumb. If I press it on, get the focus and release, I'm in one shot mode. It's not gonna to try to continue focusing. I know that I've got the, the distance to the subject measured, the focus is there, I'm good to go. If as long as the subject doesn't move forward or backwards, they're gonna be in focus then I can just take shots with my index finger as much as I want, and I don't have to worry about it refocusing. Uh, an example of that is um, birds in a, in a tree, and you've got some branches and stuff in between. And let's say, I know you've probably run into this, you're pressing halfway down and you get the focus, and it gets focus on the bird, but then, then maybe there's a little bit of wind or something like that, or you move a tiny little bit, which is easy to do with a telephoto lens, that little bit of movement, all of a sudden a branch comes across the screen and it grabs focus on the branch. You lose the bird and you lose the shot. So if I press halfway down, or sorry, not halfway down, if I press with my thumb on the AF on, get my focus and then release, now I know I've got that focus. It doesn't matter if I move around a little bit every time I put that bird back into my frame, as long as it hasn't moved forward or backwards, I'm gonna have a sharp shot. Um, if I've got something, I mentioned the bride coming towards me. The bride's coming towards me, I can press halfway and I can just start shooting. I shoot, I shoot, I shoot as 
she comes towards me, I'm getting shot after shot after shot, and they're all tack sharp. It's a really great little system. So that's how you set it. Now, a couple things are going to happen. You're going to hand your camera to somebody at some point and ask them to take a photo for you. They're not going to be able to take the photo and get it in focus. All, everyone's going to try to press halfway down, press all the, way, uh, all the way down for the shutter. So you do need to, if you ever hand this camera off to somebody to take a photo of you, you're going to have to teach them that little button on the back. Just tell them to hit it, release it, and then take the shot. You know, if you're doing a selfie on vacation or something like that. So anyways, that's my uh, little tutorial today. Uh, it's back button focus. I think that every photographer should be doing this. Honestly, I can say that it, uh, I set up the time and date in my camera when I get a new camera. I set up my copyright information and I set up back button focus. Those are the three first things that happen in there. I wanna make sure that every one of my cameras is set up for that. Uh, and, and it's the same button on every camera. You can program different buttons to do different things. I like to make sure that the same buttons on all of my cameras do the exact same thing. So no, I don't have that, uh, that change in muscle memory every time I pick something up. So get out there, get working. It's going to take a little bit of practice when you first get started with it. You, you've got to put it into action, but I, I'm absolutely sure all of my students, uh, once they get onto this, they absolutely love it. That is back button focus. Make sure you get out there and you get a little bit of practice with it. It is a little bit tricky when you first start, right? You're gonna uh, you're gonna try to press halfway and you're gonna wonder why is this isn't, why is it not focusing again? You've got to remember you've put that focus back on the thumb instead of on the finger. But uh, I guarantee you, once you get going with this and you've worked through it for a day or two, you're gonna be you're gonna love it. You're gonna get some great shots. You're never gonna have to switch back and forth between your one shot or AFS mode and your AFC mode continuous uh, or AI servo. It's there, it's going, and you're not gonna have a problem. I never switch out of AI servo. I have it set up this way. This is my a AFS or my uh, one shot is my thumb and release. So get out there, get some practice in. Let me know in the comments what you think. Please subscribe to the channel, hit that little bell so you get some notifications, and we'll be seeing you soon.